Hello everyone, hello from Brazil, my name is Gabriel, I'm from the Federal University of Espírito Santo and I want to thank the Around the World Symposium for inviting us to participate again and particularly because they were very tolerant with my presentation because I'm not live, sadly I'm teaching right now so I cannot join you like on the streaming and I won't be talking about this year's topic which is big data because my last research actually it's very hard to deal with using big data methods like this large-scale data mining uh, and I'll talk very briefly about it and then move on to well present to you what is this research about it's very very particular it's, it's kind of paradoxical that I can use big data methods or approaches since my subject is precisely the transformations in audiovisual language that uh, are caused by the propagation of video on social platforms such as YouTube, such as Facebook. I was then researching how the characteristics of video, of filmmaking, change due to these new modes of online circulation. But my problem start because my specific subject is not that easy to find using the common methods, uh, the common semantic approaches used by big data research. Uh, of course, first of all, I lack power, I lack the resources, I lack processing, storage, I lack manpower even to go through the network and let's say download all the videos that interest me. But at the same time, the the two go scripts for acquiring this data they do not work with my with my subject because mostly these scripts are based on on folksonomy on sort of self awareness that people have about the content they post online so they tag it accordingly they use hashtags they use certain keywords and in my case in the case of my subject again this sort of self-awareness doesn't really happen. Why is that so? And what is my subject after all? Well, my subject is this one. Vertical videos. Up to this point, you're probably very annoyed by the video I'm presenting because there's probably huge black bars called pillar boxes uh, on both sides of the screen. And well, lots of people produce these videos nowadays and post them online precisely because they use the same equipment as I'm using right now, mobile uh, media technologies. I'm using a tablet, but this started very much due to phones, okay? There's something in the ergonomy, in the design of phones that make them to be used vertically and well, since that's the most normal way of handling them for, for talking and even for operation, since lots of these new platforms, they kind of remediate printed media, like books, in the case of tablets and e-readers, e people also started using them to record things vertically. And of course, they started uploading these online. And most of the people that are not really uh, well versed in cinematographic languages or don't really care or on the other hand they are used to the fluidity of screens online on the internet on the computer desktop they just post these videos and don't really worry about uh, how specific how strange how different is this aspect ratio and in fact it only becomes strange when you see it surrounded by these black bars then you become aware of how extraordinary it is. Anyway, so people that post it online normally don't, don't say, well, this is my vertical video. They just say, this is my video. And if you go to YouTube, for instance, and you look for vertical videos, you will find lots of videos, okay? But they are not really vertical. They are videos against vertical videos like vertical video syndrome, which was one of the, my main research uh, subjects. The cure for vertical video, turn your phone, no more vertical videos. 
etc etc here you have the fulcrum of my question since i cannot really mine these data and analyze them one by one and i'm not sure that it would be the best solution for the kind of research i'm doing i decided to go on kind of trying to understand the discursive formations around vertical videos the way these new not really new but this characteristic of uh, of online of audiovisual works are legitimized or delegitimized in in the new platforms in digital media and of course one big example are these these sort of videos talking trash about vertical videos criticizing other people in the same platform that are producing these as if they were not aware of how video or how cinema or how movie making work so in a way these normally are very funny videos i i'll probably send you a link for this this best one which is the vertical video syndrome it's really good really funny but in the end it's very normative it says well you can't do this because video doesn't work this way and i mean who said so right now we have all these platforms that actually have uh, standard vertical screens so why not use them and why can't youtube for instance just frame the vertical video in a proper vertical uh, frame right why does it have to create pillar boxes instead of respecting the image's aspect ratio. My research tried to dig uh, all the elements that are kind of surrounding the possibilities of making and legitimizing vertical videos or not. First, in a more conceptual way, so criticism both pro and against the vertical videos, and secondly, in terms of to do a, a very literal translation from Frederick Kittler's work, uh, networks of inscription. So which technologies we are using and how they foster or inhibit the production of vertical videos. And well, first of all, what I have to say is that if you do some archaeology, archaeology of moving image media, you discover that vertical videos or the vertical moving image is not new at all. You have it in pre-cinematographic devices if you if you take zoetropes and, and praxinoscopes they have like images that are taller than wider okay because of the sort of material constraints of of the device but also in the beginning of cinema when hollywood was was trying to standardize the screen uh, no one less than sergey eisenstein the russian filmmaker tried to push for what he called a dynamic square. He wanted the screen to be square so that people could use the most diverse formats of projection and exploit this, okay? They, they, he, he really wanted to try different formats as if they were inherent to the moving image because, well, they were to photography before that, so why not? And I think it's very interesting to see how in this beginning you had the will to experiment with formats, but standardization mostly. Standardization of exhibition, projection, kind of made it impossible, so as to say. And as we interjected this structure, as we believe that this structure is natural, we also feel that the vertical video, the vertical moving image is wrong. Well. And it's not a, a surprise, it's not a coincidence that from that point on, the, the mo most people that exploited, that explored the vertical moving images were artists. They were interested in exploring aesthetic possibilities of, of the medium, so uh, to the further extent, they, they did not want to limit themselves to what was predetermined, predefined by the apparatus. And uh, well, what I can show you here, just as an example, well, there's there's some work by Bill Viola, for instance. I'll try and show it here. For instance, here's the crossing.
Anyway, and it's interesting to see that, of course, there is this uh, this sort of belief or this sort of accepted understanding that art should explore the limits of language, but I think it's also interesting to consider that there is more possibilities of exploration, of arranging, rearranging the normal cinematographic apparatus, the normal projection apparatus in the white cube or any, any equivalent art space. Whereas cinema is very much restricted by a circuit that is crystallized, like you have theater screens in, in the movie theaters and they are there as part of the buildings. You have TVs in your houses and they are organized in such a way that you cannot really turn them around very easily, which is one of the jokes made by, by that movie I was telling you about, the vertical video syndrome. They say, well, TVs are vertical, are horizontal, so, and they try, they show the puppets that enact a video trying to turn on a TV, uh, like, sideways, so that it could be vertical. Well, the thing is, TVs can be turned sideways. We, we see it nowadays everywhere when you see like these, these flat screens, very big ones, remediating posters, remediating, for instance, uh, advertisement, even in bus stops, if you go to some cities, not really in well, sorry for the interruption. As I said, I don't have much storage space. I had to delete some stuff from my from my tablet to, to free some space for this for this video. But as I was saying, it's possible nowadays to even turn the monitors sideways, the screens sideways, and it's precisely a sort of well performance, discursive performance that another artist called Aaron Barto did in his how to watch vertical videos tutorial that he kind of used it to promote uh, vertical video screenings that he organized with the uh, curating YouTube website. They organized it like in a real space. I think it's Batum Berlin in Berlin, which is one example of a vertical video screening that happened in 2013. There was another one organized by the Sonic Acts Festival and we did one here as part of the research, of the vertical video research here at UFIS, a much smaller one. So anyway, and I think that these, these sort of artistic, some of these artistic endeavors or, or initiatives, they try to normalize, to bring back to the vernacular the use of the vertical moving image. But on the other hand, it's very interesting to see how nowadays you even have this sort of dispute of, of the specificities of the medium being done in terms of algorithms being programmed into the device. Like, there was the release of a software called uh, Horizon, which is mostly a novelty application. Let me see if I still have it here. Yes, Horizon, which is, which is, uh, okay. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, anyway, it's, it's a novelty app that kind of uh, prevents you from recording a vertical video. It, it tells you to to turn your phone sideways, or you can you can opt for for a, a sort of crop of the image, which is like programming the language into the device, programming restrictions, like uh, defective by designers being used to control how people express themselves, and in fact Google incorporated this in, in its official YouTube applications like YouTube Capture, which is the official YouTube video capture application. It doesn't allow you to record a vertical video. You have to record it horizontally. You cannot press press REC, the red REC button, if, if you're holding the device horizontally, which is interesting to consider. And more interesting for me is how people cheer these software solutions. Some people really are concerned or are annoyed by vertical videos and they are very happy when they see big corporations start to implement this sort of restrictions to the devices and to control the way we express ourselves. So in my, my just to summarize, I think it's very interesting to see how audiovisual languages 
means of creation are evolving and especially if you do this sort of transversal research considering many platforms and ways in which the new image many quotation marks there is being organized so thanks very much again everyone I'll, I'll send you a link to all the references I give here sorry for the for the kind of very crazy presentation but I hope you enjoyed and I hope you I can catch up some of the conference later when I'm back from my class thanks very much have a nice day